breaking as we speak. We are learning right now that Uber is suffering a computer system hack. Uh, this major airline says a hacker accessed the personal information of some of its customers and employees. Tonight, we're also learning about a new cybersecurity and ransomware threat. Have had their personal data compromised, and that could have included sensitive. Uber has been hacked. The rideshare company confirmed up. Now that it's Cybersecurity Awareness Month, I'm here to give you guys three tips on how you can reduce the likelihood of your social media accounts of being hacked. Now, if you're new here, my name is Tavian Payton or Tay on Tech, and on my channel, I like to talk about technology, tech career advice, and how to leverage your nine to five to gain financial freedom. Now, I created this video with people in mind that use social media, which is surprise everyone. So, whenever you see me talking about scenarios or giving examples, it's most likely going to be geared towards social media, but that does not mean that these tips are exclusive for social media accounts. This information could be applied to anything or any site that relies on a password for you to log in. Tip number one, you want to make sure that you are using a password manager. Now you may be wondering, what is a password manager? And it sounds exactly like what it is. It's a piece of software that manages your passwords. With data breaches happen as often as they happen now, you want to make sure that you are safeguarding your passwords. What people don't realize when these data breaches happen, these hackers are attaining personal identifying information, which may include your name, your address, your birth date, your email address, and even the passwords that you use to log into that site. And what people don't realize is, the average user tends to recycle their passwords. So now that you just use this password that was on parkmobile.com or google.com or whatever it may be, now they may have access to now your Twitter accounts, your Instagram accounts, your TikTok accounts, because we as humans tend to recycle passwords because they're easy to remember. But when you're using a password manager, it generates your passwords for you and you don't even have to remember it. And I know that may sound a little scary that you don't have access, you don't actually remember your password. But if you are using a password manager that generates these passwords, you can know for sure that your password is gonna be strong, it's gonna be hard to crack, and overall, it's just a safer thing to do because most people, when they do create their passwords, they're doing, they're using their birthdays, they're using their last names, they're using their mom's name, they're using their date of birth. They're using something to identify themselves. And if you didn't know, there are tools on the internet that will allow a hacker to take all the personal information they know about you and generate passwords that you may or may not have used within the past. So that's also another thing to think about when you're using personal identifying information. Now, if you're one of those individuals that just, I need to know my password and I have to do something that's identif uh, personal identifying to me, try to do something in which I call like using the first letter of a sentence. For example, if I want to create a password that was identifying to me, but still kind of difficult to guess, I would do something like, my name is Tavian Payton and I was born in New York, New York in 1976. I would take the first letter of each of those words and make that into a password. So when you see it, it doesn't make sense at all. But to me, because I know what the sentence is, it will make sense to me. Next up, we have multi-factor authentication. This can actually be more important than the security of the password itself. And if you don't know what multi-factor authentication is, it's three things. It's what you are, which could be biometrics, a face scan, fingerprint scan, etc. It can be what do you have, such as hardware tokens, at this UB key that you see right here, or what do you know, which can also be software tokens, such as Google Authenticator, LastPass, OctaVerify, and the list goes on. Now, the great thing about multi-factor authentication is even if the attacker has your password, he still cannot log into your account unless he has that second half of the multi-factor authentication portion of things. So let's say the user want to access your TikTok, your Twitter, or your Instagram account. He has the username and a password. Once he tries to log in, he's greeted with a second screen saying, hey, we either need this six digit code or we need to verify your information through the YubiKey that you use. Now, if that user or if that individual in attacker does not have the information, then he cannot access any of your information. And which now we go into social engineering, 
which plays a part in all of this. Social engineering is the third reason on how many people lose their social media accounts. Even with the Uber attack, the hacker bought stolen credentials that was on the dark web, used that information to log into a Slack account. Even though the employee had multi-factor authentication set up, he was social engineered into accepting the request and allowing the attacker to access all of his accounts or access internal tools. So the thing about social engineering is that it's usually some type of tactic to deceive you. So you may receive an email saying, hey, we need you to reset your password. By you clicking this link, you're basically going into there, entering your password, but what you're not realizing is you're actually sending the attacker your information. You should never click links in the email if you don't know who it's coming from. If the grammar looks incorrect, or if it looks fishy, or it just does not look like it's legitimate, you wanna make sure you always wanna report that as spam. You never wanna click on any links in there. I don't think the average person understands how dangerous clicking unknown links can be. For instance, you can be logging to your bank and you receive this unknown email that looks dangerously suspicious and they ask you to reset your password or ask you to click this link to reset a password. If you didn't know, they can steal your session that you're logging into your bank and empty out your bank account just because you clicked that particular link. So you definitely wanna be careful with that. With that being said, that concludes my video giving you guys three tips that can reduce the likelihood of your social media accounts being hacked. If this is content that you like and enjoy, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I would really appreciate it and it also helps the algorithm.